St. Bernard President Craig Teferro quietly watches videotape of flood walls built to protect his parish. It blows my mind. But he quickly finds words to react when he sees being pulled out of this flood wall. That should be criminal. What he's talking about was witnessed by a St. Bernard Parish resident who didn't want to be identified, but did have sharp criticism of the work done by a contractor hired by the Army Corps of Engineers. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a hole in a gas tank of an airplane. Instead of an airplane, though, it's this flood wall. And instead of a Band-Aid, the witness says two years ago, he saw the contractor filling the expansion joint or opening between the flood walls with newspaper. The whole length of the wall was stuffed with newspaper. And when he confronted the contractor, the contractor blamed Washington for the substandard work. He basically told me that when Congress sent down the money, it would be repaired the proper way. But during a recent trip with our camera, two years later, it was apparent that didn't happen. There we go, maybe we'll salvage something out of this. Much of the newspaper had deteriorated or had been eaten by bugs, but some still remained. Parade. Definitely pick May 21st, 2006. This is the date on the paper. We asked local engineer Subhash Kulkarni to investigate our findings of the flood wall. They should have done a better job than what you see here. Kulkarni is a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. The ASCE named an outstanding civil engineer in Louisiana back in 2003. I cannot even comprehend that somebody would uh, put some stuff, some uh, newspaper there. Engineers tell us an expansion joint has three lines of defense. The first is this elastic strip that helps keep water out. In the middle is the most important part. That's a water stop, and that is included in this flood wall right here. But what's missing is a rubber joint that goes in between these. That helps keep foreign objects out. Our witness says the contractor used the newspaper in place of the rubber joint. Kulkarni says it's not a short-term risk, but over time, that missing rubber joint could weaken the water stop. Uh, it could be very serious. It doesn't take a lot of uh, stress to cause the failure of these flood walls. We don't know after two years, after three years, how the main joint will perform. This is the second, or I mean the first line of defense but the Army Corps says they're confident this flood wall will sufficiently defend residents of St. Bernard and the Ninth War. If you look at the repairs here that we made to the joints, it, there's not really a safety issue with the joints at all. And the Corps says they're satisfied with the quality of work done by their contractor. So in your mind, is there any even construction shoddy work or anything like that? No, I don't think at all. But days before that interview, following a request by Eyewitness News, another Corps employee emailed us the Corps standards for expansion joint construction. And in that email, the Corps employee describes the specific materials needed, sponge rubber, that goes next to the water stop. In the same spot, our witness saw a contractor stuffing newspaper back in 2006. If there is nothing behind this to the, to the water stop, that's not what the specs called for, correct? Well, again, this was just a, an emergency repair. But that's so not, but I'm just asking. If we were to build a new flood wall, that would not be the case. We would have the water stop, we would have some joint filler material in between, and then we would probably put the elastic seal over the top of it. In this case, we tried to do the repairs as quick as possible um, to protect the water stop so that we had it in place before the next hurricane season. But according to this contract, that may not be the case. Eyewitness News obtained the more than 400-page contract with Lafayette-based company Urcon Corporation to do the almost $2 million of work to raise and repair the flood wall under the Paris Road Bridge months after Katrina. In the contract, we found at least four mentions of field-molded sealants. Kulkarni says that's the sponge rubber material to fill the cavity in the expansion joint. And he says the contract shows the rubber material was contractually required to be installed. I would say that uh, they have not met uh, their obligation uh, to install the joint correctly. Not even installed. They have not installed at all. 
We contacted the president of Ercon Corporation by phone and email. He didn't respond to our repeated requests for a comment on this story. But our investigation revealed Ercon Corporation is not even licensed by the state's board for contractors. Who signed off on this work that said it was okay? But the Corps says as long as the federal government pays for the work, it doesn't prevent them from hiring an unlicensed Louisiana company. If you're telling me that this was was an out-of-town contractor, um, then whoever did this work, when they drive back to wherever they're from and they put their head on the pillow at night, um, does it really matter to them if, if this particular uh, part of the, the project fails? DeFaro calls the response from the Corps and contractor unacceptable. Would they let a contractor put uh, Play-Doh in the place of mortar when they put bricks on their house? No, I don't think so. But DeFerro says while this newspaper doesn't define the entire levy system, it does have him concerned about the oversight of all of the work being done in southeast Louisiana. It's an indictment against the quality of work that's being done. Now let's hope that that same standard and that same concept wasn't used in constructing the flood wall. Let's hope that it wasn't used in constructing levees.